Let's see how to show that something is a member of a list in Idris. So the first thing we need to do is define what we mean by showing that something is a member of a list. And we'll do that with a data type called elum, where an instance of elum is a proof that something is a part of some list. So elum needs to have the thing we're looking for, and it needs the list. And then we get back a type. We give elum two constructors. Here represents that the element we care about is the first thing in the list. So here is a proof that x is an element of the list that has x as its first element. So colon colon, that is to say cons, simply add something to the front of a the list. Then there takes a proof that x is in the tail of a list and constructs a proof that it is in that list extended by one thing which is to say it's saying that the element isn't here, but we can prove that it's later. So we take a proof that it's in the tail, so lm x x's, and we give back a proof that we're in x's extended by some new element y. If we load this um, definition, Idris actually will complain, and we see that it can't figure out what a is. This is because it figures out that it needs to insert x as a kind of universally quantified implicit argument, but it doesn't know what type x has, and rather than guessing too many things, it simply stops. So we need to give it a hint. We do that with a using block. So using, we say that x is an a, and we say that x is, is in list of a. Then we have to indent this because using is over some indented scope. And now we see that it just accepts the definition. So when we say that we want to check if something is in a buffer or in a list, what do we do? We're going to need some, some way of representing the fact that it's either there or it isn't there. So we do that using dec. So what is dec? Let's look it up in the documentation. So I say control u, control c, control d, d, which means Type in a name, and I'll look up the documentation for it. This was also available in the Idris menu. And I look up my type dec, and we see that a decidable property either holds or is a contradiction, which is to say that we have a constructor yes, and the yes takes a proof that a is the case, which would be something like elum, and then no takes a proof that it implies the empty type. The empty type cannot be built, so if we have a function from something to the empty type, then we know that the thing we're coming from cannot be built either, because otherwise we would not be able to define this function. This is like saying that something is a contradiction. OK. Let's close that and define our function. We're going to call it dec elem, because we're deciding whether or not something is an element. And then we're going to say that, that takes, uh, the dec elem takes some x in type a and some x's, which is in list of a. And what's going to return is deck of elem x of x's. OK. Because we're in Idris mode, we can ask it to start the definition for us. So control C, control S generates an initial pattern match clause. And here, we don't know anything about our type a, but we do know that x's is a list. So a list has our two constructors, cons and nil. So let's check those. And we load our buffer, and we can see our proof obligations, which is to say that the right-hand sides that we need to write. So now we have the case where we need to decide whether or not x is an element of the empty list, and we need to decide whether or not x is an element of the list that begins with some element y and has the tail x's. Well, the empty list doesn't have any elements. But in order to apply the no constructor, we actually need that proof. If you remember the type of no, it took this proof that it was a contradiction. So we need to define that proof. So I'll call that empty, I'll call it nil no elements. And that's going to say that x being an element of nil implies the empty type. And once again, we get our no such variable a.
Luckily, we have a using block, so we can just indent. Now, we start the pattern match, and we see that we have this proof x. If we, can, if we try to case split x, however, it just disappears, because there's actually no type correct thing that can be constructed here. So we insert a possible pattern match, which would be here, and then we use the impossible keyword. And what impossible means is that there's no way that this pattern can type check. And now we don't need to write anything else because we've gone far enough down into the split for Idris to be convinced that the function does not is not definable, which is that there are no pattern match cases for it that would actually type check. Okay. I'm turning on totality checking because that'll make sure that we don't forget any cases. So now that we have our proof that it's impossible to construct an element of the empty list, we can use that here. And we can say no, and then empty no elements. And why do we need empty no elements? Well, we've used no. And now we can see that we've got some unnamed thing. Pi arg is a name that Idris generates on its own, which is showing an lm x empty list. So the way we construct that is using our nil no elements. And we load and we see that it's been accepted by Idris. Now we need to check that whether or not x is an element of the list y cons x is. Well, there's two ways it could be that. Either x is y or x is an element of x's. How do we check if x is y? We need a little bit more information and context to do that. To do that, we're going to use something called decidability of equality. So in other words, we're going to need A to be some type for which we can decide whether or not two elements are equal to one another. So we have a type class called deceq, which lets us do that. So let's take a look at the docs of deceq. We can see that deceq has one method called little deceq. And it decides whether or not two elements of the type t, which is our type that our type class is defined on, are proposition equal. That is this equality type. OK. Now, let's go back to our book. We can see that we need to check whether or not x is y. And if x is y, then we can use our here constructor. But we can't do that on the right-hand side, because we are needing to do some pattern matching where we need to be able to see on the left that our variables are the same. So what happens if we do it in a case block on the right hand side? Well, we've, we've got x and y as separate things in our context still. So this isn't helping us. If we have the case that they're the same, And in the case where they're different, even here where we know they're the same, we, we can't see that fact. We need to we need we need something a little bit more powerful. So the way that we do this is we use something called the width rule. So the width rule is kind of like pattern guards. Control C, Control W inserts a width block, and then I can say with decik of x y. And now, when I pattern match on the result of that call, I can see that I've got my yes and my no. And then I pattern match on this proof. And note that the y changed into x. So let's say undo real quick, just so you can see that again. If I pattern match on proof x and x colon x's, this is because that refl is a proof that x is equal to x. In other words, that the thing to the left of the equal sign is the same thing as the thing to the right. So in order for our pattern match to be well typed, those now have to be the same. And the Idris compiler inserts that for us. Well, we have a proof already that, some, that the first element of a list is the member of that list. And that proof is called here. So we use our yes case. And then we write here. 
In fact, Idris can solve that for us because it now has enough information, so we just say auto, control C, control A, and it takes care of yes here. In the case that x is not equal to y, we now need to know whether or not x is an element of x's, that is to say, whether x is in the tail of the list, to know whether or not x is in the entire list. So we take another where block, and now we use our actual function that we're defining. So we'll call that decelum of x x's. We load, and then we case split on the result of that. So if we know that it was in the tail, we now have a proof that it was in the tail. And I'm going to call that elt to underline the fact that it's a proof of our elm type. So I load, and now I can see that in our right-hand side one case, we need to show that x is an element of y x's, but we know that x is an element of x's already. We have a constructor called there. It just can find that for us, so we say auto. Finally, we're in our case where we know it's not the head of the list, and we know it's not in the tail of the list. This means it's not going to be in the list. So we'll use our no constructor. And now we're stuck. We know it's not the head, we know it's not the tail, but we need to state that fact somehow. So once again, we'll define another limb. And I'm going to call this not here, not, not there, not anywhere. And that's going to take a proof that x is not equal to y. So we say that x equal y would imply a contradiction. And it's going to take a proof that x is not in the tail of some list. So we say lm x x's implies a contradiction. And then we know, since it's not the head and it's not the tail, that it's not going to be in the list. So we have lm x y cons x's implies a contradiction. Let's line this up a little better. So I ask Idris to start my definition, and now it's given some somewhat unhelpful names here. So we'll call that not here, not there, and then h for hypothesis. So now I can look in my meta variables buffer down here, and I can see that I've got these possibilities. So what I can do now is I can pattern match on h to find out which of those two proofs I should use. I load again, and now I can see in the case that it was here, we know that x is equal to y, if you remember how the dependent pattern matching worked. So up here, we can see that now we have a proof that y is equal to y implies a contradiction. Well, we know that y, in fact, does equal to y, so we can easily derive a contradiction from those two things. So we say not here of bottom, or sorry, not here of refl. Remember that REFL is the proof of equality, and that case is taken care of. In the second case, we know that x is not in the tail of the list, that's this not there argument, but our hypothesis is that x is in the tail of the list. So we can use not there together with our second x, and I'm going to call this else. So I'm going to say not there of elt. We load the buffer and we see that our proof obligations are gone. Okay. Let's use not here, not there, not anywhere inside of the body of no. So we say, before we do that, let's pick some better names for these pattern variables. So our pattern variable called contra here is a proof that x is not equal to y. So I'm going to call, instead of calling it contra, I'm going to call it not here. So let's do a quick find replace. place. 
and then in it pick the name f because it looks kind of like a function, but we're going to call it not there. And now no can be applied to not here, not there, not anywhere of not here and not there. And I'll move that down a line to maintain readability. I then load my buffer and I see that it's been defined and the meta variable window went away. So what did I have of instances for Decheek? Well, we have one for nat. So let's check whether or not elements are in lists of nats, just to test our code out. So we want to say deck elem of, we'll say three, and we're going to give that a little type annotation here. And because three is overloaded in Idris syntax, and then we're going to check that that's in the list one, two, three. And we see, in fact, it is. And not only do we know that it's in there, we know where it is. In other words, we go two steps and then we're there. One, two, and then we're there. So let's, let's say we were looking for the number seven in that list. Here we got back no. And no gave us this big, horrible proof term. But in fact, that's a proof that seven is not in the list. So that concludes our definition of a decision procedure for being an element of a list. And you've seen the with rule and you've seen some dependent pattern matching.